Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda and today I'll be sharing how I made this graphic and interactive card using some Concord and Ninth products. I recently picked up the Happy Rays Turnabout Bundle during Concord and Ninth's inventory sale and this turnabout is really fun. It's a fun graphic look, you can use it with so many different things. And the die set is really cute. I love that it has a coordinating die for two sentiments there. And it's just, it's nice. We're not going to be using it today, but it's nice. But I thought that this would pair really well with the All About Cake Bundle. Um, this was released a couple months ago. And it's so cute. You can make a little cake that pops up in your card. And there are perfect sentiments to go along with it. I recently used this bundle here, as you see, with the Celebrations Turnabout. Uh, a couple months ago and that card is posted on my blog which I will link below. So getting started here I have my original Misty and I'm pulling out the turnabout and the alignment jig or alignment guide that comes with every turnabout. This is essential to line up your turnabouts to get them to stamp correctly. So what you do is you align the X's, the black X on the alignment jig with the X on the turnabout jig. And so you want those two to match up so you don't see the white X on the guide there. See, there's the white X. You line up the black X so it completely covers the white X. And that way things will be lined up perfectly. So I pop that back in my Misty. And then I will pull out the stamp. Once I get that realigned. <laughs> I'll pull out the stamp here and I will line it up with the black outlines on the alignment jig there. You want to get things as perfect as you can. You might have to move and manipulate images, but doing so will guarantee that your stamping will be foolproof. This will create a background easily with no issues, little to no effort <laughs> once the alignment is done. All right, so now that I have that lined up, I'm just gonna close the door of my Misty and pick up the stamp and then peel off the alignment jig and save that for later. Put that with the packaging. Don't lose it. <laughs> All right. And then I have my color swatch combo book. Concord and Ninth came out with this when they released their new colors and I love it. I didn't think I would love it as much as I do, but making color combinations and having swatches are so fun. So I picked this palette. It's really fun, super birthday. -y. It can be used for literally anything. And so here I am getting ready to stamp. I'm priming my stamp by running my fingers over it to remove some of the residue from production. And then I picked up my first color, which is honeycomb. I love this yellow. It's beautiful. <laughs> I think this one might be my new favorite yellow out of everything. So here I'm stamping it. And I have my pink fresh pressure tool thing. You know, it helps you have even pressure over your stamp. And then I decided to double stamp this just for a, a little bit of a darker image. And then because also using ink cubes, you can have like some little gaps from where you're like stamping the foam pad over your stamp. So I'm cleaning off my stamp, drying it. And then with a turnabout, you just rotate it a quarter turn. So that two there is going to go in the corner where the one just was. And I'm going to put that back in place and we're going to pick up our next color. Yeah, I'm checking to make sure placement's good. You don't want to mess that up now once you've, you know, started stamping. And I've picked up Dragon Fruit, which is a gorgeous pink. Absolutely gorgeous. It packs a punch for sure. And it's just, it looks so good with the honeycomb. All right, and I'm stamping that, putting some pressure all over it. And then I am going to double stamp this as well, just to get a more full coverage look. And then, as you'll see here, my stamp is stained. And this is, this is common with, like, your purples, dark blues, reds, you know, your very rich colors. And that, it doesn't affect the product at all, like... Your stamp isn't damaged by any means. It just, just now went from being clear to whatever color it's picked up. But as you'll see here, when I use nectar over this, I clean the stamp off in between. But dragon fruit, like I said, it packs a punch. <laughs> so there's a bit of residual ink on this stamp, which 
I usually when I do this, I'll test my stamp and you'll see here like this is more it looks more like a carnation than nectar does as I have that little swatch on the bottom there. So I'm cleaning this off again, moving on to the next color, you know, trying to really wipe it. And I'm picking up Juniper, which this is another beautiful color. I really, really like this. I wasn't sure I was going to like it um, because Evergreen has a place in my heart, but Juniper is gorgeous. So I'm stamping that down here, making sure I'm in the corner, my Misty. Using my little pressure tool and boom. Isn't that beautiful? Even though the nectar is a little, um, you know, not true to color there, it's still a really, really pretty panel. So here I am, I'm setting up with two backgrounds with two jigs because I have a couple of them. And I had the idea of putting one background on the outside of the card and then one on the inside. I thought it would be a really great focal point for the cake image to sit in front of. So here I am doing my honeycomb backgrounds, double stamping both of them as I go. And then here, rotating the jig, stamping down some dragon fruit again. I really love this color. <laughs> <laughs> all right so working on that second background here gorgeous all right so i'm gonna clean this stamp off again with that's water on a lawn fawn chamois and i'm drying it with a microfiber towel and this is what i tend to do i like to have like a test sheet of paper so as you can see, after stamping that and wiping it, there's like a little halo of pink color still. So I know my stamp, it's still clinging on to some pigment, some ink. So I'm cleaning that off again and drying it. And I picked up my nectar again, and I'm going to do a little bit of a test stamp because after the last turnabout background I did, I don't want to risk it. And so as you see here, the color is still not true to the ink pad, but we're getting closer. It's less carnation-y colored and more of like a... I don't, like a coral it's pretty but it's not the look that I'm going for so again I'm wiping off my stamp and drying it and another little test it's still not quite there it's a little bit the color has changed from the last time I tested it to here but it's still not nectar and I checked my ink pad to make sure I hadn't contaminated it wondering if I got any ink on it after the first turnabout background um and I didn't and I wanted to test juniper just to make sure that that color wouldn't be distorted by the little dragon fruit left over and it's not juniper stamps perfectly so I decided to move on stamp the juniper and then we'll come back to the color after and figure out the next step so here I am with juniper some of these I did double stamp some I didn't I'm okay with the like sketchy look of the background of it not being perfect. Um, so I kind of just went with it and I didn't want the color to be too strong that it overpowered the others. So here I'm checking the stamp again since Juniper is such a strong color and you can see that there is some residue from the, the color on my stamp. So I cleaned it again, wiped it off. And I'm gonna test the stamp again, just to double check. Really putting the pressure on it, trying to transfer anything that there could be. And the stamp looks clean. There's nothing there that makes me think that I have any leftover ink on it. So I'm gonna try Nectar again because I just, I can't let it go. And it still is not quite where it should be. Each time we're getting closer, but as I'm cleaning off my stamp again, you can see the residue. That's actually from the dragon fruit, I believe, because I didn't stamp nectar up there. So I stamped it again, and at this point, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to move on, and luckily, during C9 summer camp, uh, the instructors were playing around with a turnabout, 
And the same thing happened. And Greg and the C9 team were talking about using stamp cleaner to really get it off. So I should have done that. But instead, I moved on. I stamped with sea glass ink since I do not have stamp cleaner yet. I need to pick that up. But yeah, I just moved on and chose sea glass instead. And I think that this still looks really nice. I like the how sea glass and juniper look together. I think it's beautiful. So I'm happy with this background. I'm I'm not too upset that juniper or that nectar <laughs> didn't work out. I mean, I can try that another time once I have stamp cleaner. So here are my two backgrounds. Love them. They're gorgeous. And at this point, I was thinking that I was going to use that today is all about you sentiment. I loved it. That's what I was planning originally. So I pulled out a bunch of nesting dies that I have. And I just, I couldn't get it quite right. I couldn't get a circle that was the right scale for that greeting. If I had one that was big enough, there would be too much empty space like you see here. I just, I didn't like all the extra space around the greeting. I could have stamped it on top of it, but it could have got lost. I thought about using the happy birthday greeting from the stamp set, but it was, it still had that same issue of not having the right nesting circle die. And I could have spun the card around landscape and stamped it or put it on a little rectangle, but I wanted a three layer cake. So I ended up pulling out the triangle confetti dies. This was released last summer and it, it works for a birthday. It's fun. It's got the same vibe. And I also pulled out the birthday scoop stamp and die set. And I was going to use that little it's your birthday sub sentiment as well as the coordinating die to make my greeting. So again, here I have my swatch book and I'm trying to decide if I want to use silver or gold. And I, comparing here to the swatches and to the background, I think silver is the winner. I think gold is nice, but with the background, it pulls a little too brassy, a little too dark. And I am stamping my little it's your day sub sentiment on some black cardstock. If I can get it lined up. <laughs> And so I'm going to hit it with a anti-static powder tool. <laughs> I'm going to stamp my Versamark embossing ink on it, close the door of my mini Misty, and I pulled out my alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This is the white that I typically reach for. I have one other in my drawer, but I haven't used it yet, but I like this alabaster. It's pretty good. So I'm dipping that in there, picking up some powder, tapping off the excess. And I also have my little tiny little detail brush flicking off any of the extra bits that stuck in spots that I don't want it. Put that powder away, hit it with my heat tool. I love watching embossing powder melt. That's like one of my favorite things in craft videos, just seeing it, you know, as it slowly melts. It's, it's one of those satisfaction moments, you know? So I'm going to melt that. And I'm going to line the die up here and I'm purposely lining it up more to the left so that the right side, it, you know, it's cutting nothing. My greeting is lined up on the left because what I want to do is I want to put this little sentiment banner onto the hooray at the end of the Y, the tail of the Y underneath the R and the A. I want it to stick to the left. So I'm running that through my Bitty Buzz Cutter, which I love this little die cut machine. It's it's one of my, I think, best investments that I've made lately. <laughs> it allows you to really take your crafting on the go. All right. So I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to assemble my greeting. So I have two layers of just plain white cardstock. I didn't want to use my fancy cardstock for this because it's just, it's not, to me, not something that needs to be a heavyweight cardstock. So I'm gluing these two layers together using some Barely Arts glue in a Gina K fine tip glue bottle. And I'm inlaying my letters. And I'm also making sure to put the little um, fallout pieces of the inside of the letters in. Um, since I decided just to build this up and I topped it off with another layer of white cardstock and silver. And I'm using the Jennifer McGuire trick here to adhere some cardstock behind my sentiment to build up the, the strength of it. I'm gluing my hooray down on the front, kind of going 
centered, but towards the top third of the panel there. And then I'm going to stick my sub-sentiment down. And I'm checking my straightness here with my Simon's Stamp T-square ruler. And I'm pulling up my Hero Arts Dove top fold card base. I love these mainly because every time I cut and score my own cardstock, things seem to go askew. So it makes it easier. <laughs> and here I'm just testing placement um, with my idea to make sure I like it, making sure that the cake will cover that white circle there. And I ended up deciding to die cut these cake layers out of some sea glass cardstock to pull into that background a bit but i also felt like it was the best color to choose um because it's not too dark it's not too light and so i ended up pulling out the cake detail stamp and stamping on the little dots using juniper ink because again i think it goes to they the two colors go together so well so i stamped that I'm just showing you how I lined it up. It was really just eyeballing it. There was nothing technical to this at all. I love these little details. It makes me think of like mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> all right. And here my cake is not glued together. I just, I'm a crafter that like, I like to see everything um, before gluing it down. I don't commit until the last minute. So here I'm cutting out the little like frosting details using the same plain white cardstock. And I'm die cutting the candles out of the same matte silver from Concord and Ninth and the honeycomb cardstock for the flames. Recutting those flames because I didn't tape down my last one and it it moved when I was die cutting which as you see here it happens And here are my flames Now I'm die cutting the pop-up element out of some Concord and Ninth white cardstock because it's, it's really good cardstock. It has the right weight to it. It's not too heavy where it makes things kind of difficult. So I have that here. And now I am putting the cake together. So Concord and Ninth made this so that there's like a little strip that you can put your glue on that hides behind the cake layer, which is super awesome. I love that they basically told you, you know, where you need to put your adhesive. That makes it, you know, a lot easier. So you do that. You just put your strip of glue or whatever you want to use. And it comes together super quickly. And now I'm adding those frosting pieces with some liquid glue. I love the little detail that these frosting pieces add to this cake. I think it's really, it's cute. It makes it, you know, playful, but still, it makes it feel graphic. At least in this situation with this background and how the cake is turning out. All right, and then for the pop-up piece, Concord and Ninth made su things super easy because the die cuts out like the little score line, so you just have to fold on those. And then they also, the die kind of cut the word glue on all the panels where you need to apply your adhesive. So it's like all the thought is being, you know, taken out of this. It really makes an easy pop-up feature for your cards. And so basically it forms this little rectangle. And it's like, that's how it sits in the card once it's open. So I'm going to add some strong double-sided tape to each section that says glue. It's every single one except for one near the top. And then I'm going to uh, burnish this so it really sticks. Finally going to glue that panel down to my card front. Or inside of my card, sorry. Really making sure that's stuck down. I'm going to take... So, the one that has no adhesive on it, the one little uh, rectangle, 
that face is up. So I'm taking the adhesive backer off of the piece directly opposite of it, if that makes sense. Um, and that sticks to your the spot where you write your greeting. Um, and if you want a stamped greeting on this card, you want to do it before getting to this point. That would make it easier. <laughs> um, and then I'm pulling off the backers on the two pieces that I folded flat here. And then you want to situate it like exactly like this. And then you just fold your card closed and it'll pick it up. And there's your, your pop-up element. Super easy to make once you get, you know, the lay of the land. So I'm going to stick my cake down on the inside. Really get that picked up by that adhesive. And there we go. We're almost done with the cake. And see, there's like no bulk to this. It's fabulous. It's not a pain to mail at all. So I'm building my candles here. Some nice shiny candles to tie into that silver on the front. And one tip I do have is to kind of eyeball placement before sticking your cake on here. And then stick it on with some uh, removable tape. Because that'll like hold placement so that you can make sure that your candles aren't too tall that when you fold the card they stick out. But it also makes it easier to glue. Um, and so I stuck those guys down, pulled off the tape, and here I am I'm adhering the card front. I love how it turned out. It's so pretty. Got that pressed down. And then at this point, I decided there needs to be a little bit more sparkle on this card. So I pulled out some rock candy sequins from Trinity Stamps. And I am, I have an arrangement, I'm kind of showing you how I build it, but I tend to like to do five or six, but I like to do groupings of three, so it's usually six. Um, so at this point, there's five on the card, and I'm just kind of tweaking it to get it how I like it, where it feel, feels balanced, the triangle isn't too symmetrical, but I ended up putting a sixth, one extra one at the top here. So I'm just going to glue those sequins down, and that'll finish off this card. I love those sequins. They're my favorite. And they, I think it really finishes the card off well. It adds a really nice shine. It's just, it's, it's gorgeous. All right, and there you go. Now you can see the shine across the card here on those sequins and that silver cardstock. And then the inside is super cute. I love it. <laughs> the inside is just, it's so happy. It'll make anybody's day. All right, and that wraps up this card. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time with more videos coming shortly.